All right, today I'm going to walk through my first little experiment here to build a simple DAO, ERC20 based DAO, um, that can own data on table land that then can only be modified um, by votes uh, proposed to the DAO from members. Okay, so in summary, what's going to happen? We're going to create an ERC20 smart contract. Um, we're going to use Open Zeppelin's governor smart contract uh, to allow for voting and execution of those uh, vote outcomes using tally. Um, and we're going to add the ability for that ERC20 smart contract to own NFTs, which it needs to be able to do in order to mint tables on table land. So it's going to mint a new table on table land and um, then it's then only that smart contract is going to have the ability to insert or change data in that uh, in that um, table, and we're going to add some functions to the smart contract that uh, allow um, allow for the insertion of rows or deletion of rows. But those functions will be scoped to only be able to execute uh, as the outcome of votes from the governor, and we're going to do that with Open Zeppelin's Defender. I found it fairly uh, fairly straightforward to use and. I've kind of gone through a bit of uh, trial and error here to get this to work. I think there's a lot of great tutorials out there um, to fill in the gaps of the knowledge that I'm not going to show you today. And um, obviously some security questions that you'll want to answer on your own. So don't take any of this as sort of audited solidity, smart contracts, um, but use it as a starting point if you like and, uh, and make sure it works for yourself. Okay, so the way I started this was actually just going to the, the wizard and I created you know, I created a mintable uh, ERC-20 um, that had votes, uh, let you capture snapshots, and I used their roles-based access control, which is the key thing you're gonna wanna do in order to use Defender um, to then grant permission to execute some of these functions uh, to the governor smart contract, which is where votes, uh, proposals and votes happen and are uh, then executed. So you'll see that basically when you use roles, it will create these, these roles um, just by name. And then later on, there'll be functions that uh, limit who is allowed to execute. Uh, for example, mint, only people that have the minter role or other smart contracts that have the minter role can run that. And all right, so I did start here and I just opened it right in Remix. However, uh, I quickly, um, I quickly deviated from that. Let's just start a blank one. Um, and so I'm gonna show you the final code. Okay. Let me just All right, so this, <clears throat> this example um, is one specifically to create a sort of shared index that only uh, owners of the token are allowed to vote on inserting new data. Actually, I think the default that will set the governor is that anybody will be able to propose. There'll be sort of a zero, uh, zero token threshold to propose, but then votes will happen um, from token holders. All right, so let me walk through some of the significant changes here. Uh, I added just this note about all of the different up, uh, new um, libraries that I imported. Oh, another note, this, this is upgradable. The contract is upgradable. And I do that a lot when I'm building these proof of concepts because it's far easier uh, to just keep, 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 keep uh, deploying updates instead of totally new contract addresses. And so uh, th that's totally something that you could get rid of if you were after you've sort of uh, picked your method and gone with it. So some keynotes here. All of this is the same as what uh, the Open Zeppelin wizard would have kicked out, I think, except for one major thing, which is this. You need to add this uh, this extension here because this is what tells. This is what adds the methods to the contract to allow it to own NFTs. 
And if you don't do that, when you start trying to mint tables from the smart contract, you're going to get all sorts of errors that are, are very, very confusing. Easy thing to miss. I've missed it and then burnt hours trying to figure out what was going on. Okay, next thing, I've added a new role called the table ant role. And I created this just uh, in order to sort of separate um, the, the access control for creating or minting new tables uh, or creating data. In this example, I'm not actually gonna let anybody mint tables because we're gonna go ahead and mint a specific table from the beginning. I'll push another, I'll push a second example without a video that has a sort of wide open contract where the members can vote on creating new tables, on inserting any kind of data into any one of those tables um, and other good things. Okay, so then I'm just gonna keep two uh, three uh, top level variables parameters here. One is gonna be our connection to the table land registry. That's where we're gonna end up minting new tables or we're gonna insert or delete data from those tables. And we're just going to keep a record of the key table, the main table, where we're going to be adding and removing data. OK, all of this is more or less the default um, from the wizard. Then you see I just also grant the initial role of the table and role to the message sender. So that's going to be the person who deploys this contract the first time. That'll be me. Next thing, I'm gonna call this function from ta the table and utilities, which just gets me the contract connected to the table and registry contract. So that I can use later to execute creation or insert statements. And then lastly, I'm gonna run this custom function called uh, create game index. All right, so what is create game index gonna do? Uh, let's get rid of all this. I'm gonna want to take a look at that. Um, great. So what it's gonna do? It's gonna just create this table called game index underscore some automated numbers, and we're gonna put into it uh, an ID that's just like sort of a row number, which we can use to reference that row later. Really helpful for deletes and later maybe for join statements if we need. And then a name, image, and download text. So it's going to execute the create, and that's going to get back our table ID, which is the token ID on the table and registry. So we're going to want this later, so we just store it in that variable we created. And we're going to remember the um, table name as well. And table name is always just this custom prefix, the chain ID, and that table ID. So we'll hang on to those for later. So it's going to execute that when this contract is created and that way this contract now owns this table and is the only you know address in the universe that can update uh, data in that table which is great because now any changes to the table have to come through my DAO and that's how we'll use voting later um, so let's see I think that's the key bit on on uh, when you deploy after you deploy there's a couple of cool functions that I have on here. One, so we're pretending we're creating this game index where we want to capture name, image, and download information per game. Um, so with that schema, we want to have a function just to add a new game. So by adding a new game, we'll add a new row to this database. So someone can say, I want to insert name, image, download, each being a string, and it will execute an insert statement into our index table that we created when the contract uh, uh, was deployed. Now, the key thing here is that this is scoped, so the only the only address that's allowed or addresses that are allowed to run this function are the ones with the table and role, and we'll come back to that later. But that just means the public can't really run this function. Um, and so we can assign this role to our governor smart contract later where votes will happen. And when a vote is successful, that contract will allow um, someone to execute the final outcome, which means you can run this function as the outcome of a vote. So you can vote to add a game and if successful, it will execute and run this function and insert data into the table. Same thing, I created a delete game function and this just does a delete by ID. So again, 
Once this row is created, you can go and see the ID right in the table. It will be automatically generated. So that means someone could come and propose, you know, maybe there was an error, maybe a game is deprecated, whatever it is. Go ahead and just propose a delete of that uh, row by the ID. Now you could similarly actually create a nice update function where you could um, send any of these parameters and just check if they were empty strings or not. And if they're not, go ahead and run it or create a dynamic update statement for that row based on the ID. Lots of cool things you could do there. Um, I created some nice little helpers that are just views. So you could come to this and you could get the JSON URI. So what this would let you do is uh, call this function. It would give you a nice URI based uh, method to go and select all the JSON from this table. Now we could do some pretty cool things here. Uh, we could do some things uh, like we could do a filter here to help uh, to help people select easily a single game by name if they just want the metadata for the name. So for this, what we might do, so this is just a nice encoded SQL statement where you're selecting everything from the game index table, which actually we see is an error. That should be quoted. There we go, nice. Um, but we might join it with a little bit more information, for example, where name equals, and in here, we want to put that, that name variable here. So actually all we're going to do is add that to the concatenation. One thing is that these are nicely uh, URL encoded. So we'll just go ahead and keep up that pattern. There we go. That should work. Um, and all right, cool. But you can do all sorts of fun things like that. What's my error? Uh, missing the call. Um, I, of course. Same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so that should all be good. We could deploy this, and theoretically, we would have our um, we would have our DAO smart contract now. The problem with that is that we won't have any of these roles uh, um, beyond just assigned to me because I'll be the person to deploy it. So we want to do a couple things. Next, we wanted to create a governor co contract, and so this governor smart contract is going to be it's going to contain all the logic for how to propose votes, who's allowed to propose votes, um, uh, how long to wait for votes to be voted on, uh, proposals to be voted on. Um, and then the mechanisms for what to do after a vote is successful or fails. And for that, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that um, really quickly here. So again, we can go right to Open Zeppelin. We can define our governor. Some key things here just to keep note on the voting period. So here it's one week. This must be, they must say someplace, this must be um, measured in the Ethereum block time. But I'm going to deploy on Polygon Mumbai. And so block times on Mumbai are like two seconds. So you, if you did like, if you did like that, it would be something like four minutes. So I actually made a mistake where I did it too low. And by the time a proposal would be on chain, it would be closed because so many blocks had passed so quickly. Um, kind of frustrated me for a while there. But more or less, this can be um, this can be deployed as is. You can change the name so it's handy and everything. But one thing that you're going to need is you're going to need uh, the address of the token that you deploy, what we just created. So, uh, and then there's another thing. They recommend using a time lock. A time lock just means um, sort of after a proposal uh, is after a proposal is, um, or sorry, yeah, after a, a vote is finished, it's the time that it waits until it executes. For for my example, we didn't need that. It actually adds another um, 
another contract will need to deploy. There's some good tutorials out there for doing that. It adds some nice security measures for your users, um, but um, I just wanted to keep it simple and keep the time lock out for now. So no time lock. Now, again, we could go ahead and just open this in Remix, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the final one looks like. Again, I made this upgradable just for the sake of writing the, uh, or doing the demo, making it a little bit easier on myself. I actually found that I don't think I ever had to use the upgrade, so you could do a non-upgradable and probably be okay. Another thing, I used the uh, a larger version number for Solidity. It lets you kind of use string concats and stuff like that. So, all right, and then you see I used the 150, so that's at two seconds, roughly five minutes. Um, that's the voting period. So after a proposal's on chain, it'll wait five, five minutes to collect all the votes. Otherwise, all of the rest is the same. Um, this is the delay after a proposal's on chain before it opens voting, if I recall correctly. Again, read the docs, double check me on this. This is the... Um, this is the proposal proposal threshold. So the number of tokens required uh, to make a proposal, I believe, again, double check me on that, um, and the quorum. So this is the minimum number of voters needed. And here I just do one because for the sake of my demo, I'll be the only one. Okay, again, note that you need to actually pass this, uh, your token address when you deploy it. So to make this work, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead Make sure that this DAO token is, is uh, compiled. Okay, yeah, if you get this error about it being too big, which I've seen in Remix a few times, you just enable some optimization and that'll trim out and uh, optimize different sections of your code automatically. So it's a bit smaller, great. Next thing we can do is um, go ahead and deploy this. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm using Brave, so I'll just use my injected Brave wallet. And again, this is upgradable, so uh, we're gonna deploy with a proxy and we should be good to go. Okay, yeah, so the, the one thing is that this in Remix, there's some nice tools for getting the compiled code and pushing it to uh, Etherscan or non-compiled code and pushing it to Etherscan and Polygon Scan. Uh, I don't have that in Remix. I just do that locally with some scripts generally. Uh, I, so you'll have to read some tutorials if you're using Remix on how to set that up. Not going to do it here. But all right, so that's been deployed. Uh, we can see the proxy here. That's great. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and deploy our governor. So our governor, if you remember, we need to give it the token address. So this is a proxy contract, what we just deployed. So you're gonna give it the proxy address and go ahead and hit deploy. So that's gonna give it that address here and tell it that this is a, a governor address for that contract. So. That's needed later because you're gonna tell it, you know, this is on-chain voting. Uh, so you're gonna tell it like what function you're voting to run or not. And it needs to know where to run that when, when it's executed later. Okay. So now we should see four deployed contracts down below. We have our game uh, index, that's the latest version of it. We have the proxy, and then we have the government contract, governor contract, and the proxy over that. Again, easy to get rid of that, easy to get rid of that. So you just have 
a static contract you push one time forever. I find it quite easy for debugging purposes to build this way. Uh, so we now have everything we need to move over to Open Zeppelin Defender. So we can go back in here and just grab the game index to start, and we're going to import a contract to Defender. So uh, we'll call it the game index demo. I pushed it to Mumbai. Got a contract there. All right, it doesn't have the ABI because like I said, I'm not automatically pushing it. So let's go quite easy. Again, we can get that here in Remix. If you go to the tab, the compiler tab, you can go ahead and just click that ABI and it will copy it into your clipboard. Great, add that. All right, so now that contract's in there. The first thing I want to do, oh, so some cool things in here. We've got a bunch about the state, and you'll see the roles are shown right here. One thing, I believe that default admin role might mean anybody can execute anything. We'll double check that later, but not, not on the video. Read the docs on it. You might want to quickly get rid of the admin role um, and give it to your governor smart contract or yourself or just get rid of this in, in case that means everybody. Again, a little unfamiliar with the role, so just read the docs on that one quickly or not quickly. Um, snapshot role, that just means you can take a snapshot of all token holders and their balances. I believe the minter role, this is who is allowed to, um, who, who's allowed to uh, mint your token, and right now, so these are just the role IDs, not the uh, not the actual owner. So actually, maybe my com maybe my comment was incorrect before. Okay, I I put this function on here to get the table name that was created when the contract was deployed. So we can actually go in here. This is the Mumbai uh, Open C. And I bet it was the most recent one. So let's just go ahead and refresh the metadata on that. Actually, we can see if we, oh no, it's, so it's 4621. So let's just go to, oops, let's just go to that token ID, 4621. Refresh that metadata. There we go. So you can see that's the right name. Ah, we can see that schema that we created in that create table function. Cool. All right, we can see some other things. Yeah, so that just has that token ID. We have this JSON URI, if you recall. So if we go ahead and look at that. Okay, that's just telling us there's no data in there yet, but we'll come back and check that out later. Great, so our contract is there. Nobody owns token yet. So. Let's go ahead and before we do anything else, just mint a bunch of this token to ourselves. And we can do that for, um, we can do that for uh, demo purposes so I can show you voting. All right, I'm just gonna, oh, uh, right. I need to, what is the, <laughs> what is the right number here? Let's just make it really big. Hopefully I get one or two. Never remember the right number of zeros. Let's go even more and more. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I am the admin on this contract still based on those roles because I was the one that deployed it. So that's why I'm allowed to run this as an admin. Um, so I'll go ahead and create this action. And we'll go ahead and execute it. So if we get lucky, 
we should be able to go over here. So this is the contract. Mm. And now mint has occurred. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I got one. <laughs> I need maybe a few more zeros would have been good, but that's cool. Um, I have one token. Let's just keep moving forward. I think that's enough to vote. Yeah, we'll be good. So our contract is in here. Admin works, great. Now we wanna get our governor into here and wire them together. So let's go back to Remix, go back to the deployed contracts, and we're gonna grab the governor uh, smart contract ID by just copying that. Go back into Defender, we're gonna import, uh, Go ahead and import that. And again, it's gonna tell us it doesn't know the ABI. What's really nice is if you publish the ABI, um, it will pick that up automatically. So make sure that you're on the right tab. You're looking at the right uh, compiled contract and we can go ahead and copy that ABI again. Hop back in here, paste it, great. Now Defender knows what functions are there to execute, that's all. Okay, we're gonna need to know this uh, address because we're gonna go back into our game index demo and we're gonna create a new proposal. Uh, I think modify access is slightly new, well, new to me on their interface. You can do it through the admin action too. Uh, so we're gonna grant it a role and the role we wanna give it, recall, is the ability to so I just copied the table land role and we need that so that it can execute those table land functions we created in our smart contract recall I um, have these custom functions for adding rows or deleting rows and we want the governor smart contract to be able to execute those and it will do so when a vote is successful so we're going to go ahead and do that and we can just select our game index gov here uh, all right so that will be the first one that's my wallet and create that you know you this is really handy because um, in in our contracts, we made them upgradable. So you could do the same thing, leave them upgradable, but hand that um, hand that role of being able to upgrade the contract over to votes. So that's very cool where you could propose changes to your contract, but let only members of the DAO vote to uh, accept those changes and run the up update. Um, cool, so that's one, you know, you you might want the governor to have multiple abilities so for example um, we could grant a second role uh, for snapshotting so grabbing a snapshot and we could grant that to the game index gov for example again i'll be the one running that And I'll just create that action. Now again, be careful leaving any of these roles quickly. So I um, I moved over here because I knew it'd be quick, but uh, I'll go back to that in the coming weeks. There we go. Sheesh. Okay, great. So now our um, now our game index is all set up with governance to. to take the outcome of votes and execute those functions that require the table land role. Very cool. Now, let's go ahead and insert some data. To do that, what we're going to need to do is go over to Tally, 
sign in, hit get started, and we're going to start a governor. Now let's uh, fill this out. So the first thing we need is the governor address. So we can get that back here. Game index gov. It never quite likes this. So let's go ahead. Make sure you select open Zeppelin governor. And we can go check this out get the block that this contract creation happened. And what did I leave out? Oh, put it in the wrong one. Good, good catch. Okay, and then we need to get the token address. So the token address likewise is here. It's our demo. Put that in there. Correct, it's an ERC20. The block height is different though. So let's go figure out when that was deployed. So yeah, it should always be the first one here. And we'll go ahead and create this governor. Great. Now, I believe you have to delegate your votes using the governor. So I'm gonna go ahead and delegate my one vote to myself. So that will be all there to start once we go voting. Okay, I have the ability to create new proposals. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new on chain proposal. So let's go ahead and all right, let's uh, try this again. Add a new I think I put game. I think I targeted the wrong address. So and we're going to run the add game function. Let's put that in the description. And we're going to run a custom action. So the target address of our custom action is the DAO token. So we should be able to look at the game index. Let's just double check that on here. That's the GID. Great. That's our target address. We're going to upload an ADI. Uh, that is here it's in there um, go ahead and upload that and we're going to use the add game method we're going to call it we're going to call this game blocks um, that would be an ipfs hash likely and that would be um, also a hash. So there we go. Let's simulate that. Great. Passes. Good sign. Let's go ahead and submit that. Now we just need to wait a few minutes. Okay. So now the vote is on chain, which is great. And it goes right into the voting period. Now, because I minted that one whole token to myself, I have a voting power of one and I can vote for this proposal. So now my vote is submitted. And this number on test nets is always a little over calculated. So I'd guess, you know, we wait five minutes and that should be, uh, that should end the voting period and we should see it succeed because I'll be the only person voting and we can go ahead and execute it. All right, we can see the single vote from me and let's see if the voting period is done. Great, voting period is over, successful vote, Let's go ahead and execute. Now we wait again. This often takes a minute or two through tally. 
although it says it was successful, one way to quickly verify success. Okay, cool. So now we have our first game in the game index and we can go ahead and if you recall, um, there was this method to get the URI for the data and we can go ahead and yeah, just go to that and it'll get us the nice JSON of all the rows. Um, actually, I just am noticing something. I'll change in the GitHub. We don't really want to unwrap it because we want an array of all the rows, which would be nice JSON to read. So that's it. Um, like I said, review all of these rows, uh, sorry, all of these roles. Make sure you have them assigned to the right people uh, or um, contracts and have fun playing with this. We have a ERC20 that can own a table and vote on inserting or deleting rows. I will push an example that goes a little bit more broad than this. It will have the ability to create new tables and then insert data into any of those tables or delete data from any of those tables. Um, so you could create really uh, pretty broad collections of data in your DAO. I'll push my whip on an NFT based uh, contract that does the same thing, though I failed to get some of this to work. I think the reasons were actually pretty small. So I can, I can go back and try to debug that over the coming weeks, but I'll put that up on the repo for you to take a look at and uh, add a little readme with all these links. Hope you have fun playing with it.